All right, Trevor here again. We're just going to talk about converting point slope and standard form into slope intercept form. Uh, so if you want to check out the video I made on how to graph both of those, uh, that'd be great. But if that just seems too complicated to you and you just you like point or uh, slope intercept form better, then uh, we're just going to run through some of the algebra that is involved with doing that. So I got two examples of standard form, two examples of point slope form coming at you. So the steps are right there in the middle. So the first thing we're going to do is add or subtract the x term to both sides, not from. So if I look at this red one here, let me uh, stay in the same color. I'm going to subtract because this is a plus 2. So minus 2x here is going to cancel that out. That's the basis of algebra. It's canceling stuff out. I'm going to write it over here, minus 2x. So what I have left on this side is negative 5y is equal to, and I'm going to start writing it in my slope-intercept form. So I'm going to put the term with x first, minus 2x, plus 10. Can't add those together. One has an x, one does not. So that's step one. Step two is I'm going to divide every term by the number in front of y. So this number in front of y, including the negative, is negative 5. So I divide this by negative 5, divide this by negative 5. Everybody in here be getting divided by negative 5. So this cancels out, which is what I want, and I got y is equal to a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive, and then I can just leave that as a fraction because fractions are cool when it comes to slope. And then 10 divided by negative 5 is the same as 10 divided by regular 5. It's just going to be negative. So that's 2. And bada bing, bada boom, there is my slope-intercept form. So checking out this blue equation is, this, I do the same thing. It's a positive x, so I'm going to subtract an x. And there's a 1 there. Say that all the time. And then minus x on this side. Whoops, I wrote 1 because I was thinking 1. So minus x, this cancels here, I'm left with 3y equals negative x plus 6. And then I do my step 2, divide every term by the number in front of y, so that's a 3, so 3, 3, you get a 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I got y is equal to, this is negative 1x, so negative 1 third is my slope, I'm going to write my x. And then 6 divided by 3 is positive 2. Don't feel bad using a calculator on some of this stuff. Uh, I know for me, sometimes I do that just to double check myself because I've been doing a lot of math. And I can make mistakes easily. So those are your standard form, converting from standard form to uh, slope-intercept form. So let's slide down here and do these two examples. So we got two examples of point-slope form. Uh, red and blue. We're going to start with the red again. So the first step is I'm going to distribute the slope to both the x and the number in the parentheses. So this 4 has to get multiplied to this x and to that 4. So 4 times x is 4x and 4 times 4 is 16. So the rest of this stuff just drops down. y minus 3 is still right here. It's still equal to that stuff. Now my step two is that I'm going to either add or subtract the number on the same side as y from both sides. So it's a minus three, so I'm going to add three because I want to make that zero. So I'm going to put it right here under the 16 because that's the that's the like term that uh, that I already have. So this becomes zero, which is what I want. I got y is equal to 4x. 16 plus three is 19, and I'm already done. That one was easy. This one in the blue here. Not so much. So we didn't. We already combined our like terms. We did step three right here. And we did 16 plus 3. So we kind of mix it in together. And then in the next one, we'll kind of do it as a separate step because and you'll see. So first thing I got to do is distribute the slope to both the x and the number. So I multiply the 1 third to the x and then the 1 third to the negative 2. A lot of people make that mistake. They don't include the negative. So then that would just be positive 2 thirds. No, there's a negative there. So this is 1 third x minus, and then when I do fractions, let's just do this. It's like 2, the whole number 2 times 1 third. When I do a whole number times a fraction, that just means the 2 multiplies with the 1. So I get negative 2 over 3. 
and I still got y plus 4 on this side. So then I go to step 2. I'm going to add or subtract the number on the same side as y, which is my plus 4. So i got to subtract. I'm trying to make that 0. So 4 minus 4 is 0 is what I want. But i got to subtract 4 over here. And I got y equals 1 third x. And then right here, you could either convert this 4 into a fraction and then make a whole mix number, you know, improper fraction thing, or you can just realize that I can leave it as a fraction. It's totally fine. Two thirds, I know what that is as a decimal, just because it's a good one to remember. Um, but if you don't, it's totally fine to leave it as a fraction plus a whole number. So a negative two thirds plus a negative four is a negative four and two thirds. Just adds together. So I'm done. There it is, slope-intercept form. And we can see with this one, this y-intercept is not so pretty. It's going to be awkward to kind of put that one on the y-axis. But you can still do it. So hopefully that helps. Copy down those steps. I know that that's just helpful to just run the steps in the equation, come back and refer to them. So hopefully that helped. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in class.